So the new ISO 20022 update is coming on November the 19th, which is tomorrow. This is gonna be a little breakdown, an opinion piece on what's gonna to happen tomorrow, what it's all about. Let's get into it. So you'll notice I'm not in my normal setting here. There actually was no video planned today. There's never been a videos planned for a Saturday unless there's something very interesting happening within the weekend and I'll always come on and make a video. All over social media over the last, I don't know how long, maybe the last year? It actually might have been a year. There's just been this hype about ISO 20022. I'm gonna briefly explain what it is and why everyone's focused on this November 19th date over any other date, really. ISO 20022 is a messaging standard that when sending payments from bank to bank, a standard is needed to be used because there's so many different types of banks. There's central banks, commercial banks, financial institutions are sending payments and they all need to basically talk to each other. The, the language needs to be the same. It all needs to be standardized. And that's why they have this code. Now this code, the ISO 20022 code, is an update to those messages and that system. And via some patents that we've broken down in the past, we can, we're can we deducing that actually retrieval of blockchain information is possible to add into this new data rich message uh, with this update on ISO 20022. I have been part of this, you know, the excitement about ISO 20022 all the way back on the 21st of November last year. It might have even been two years ago where I was getting all excited about it. I can't actually remember anymore. But I kind of want to give an updated opinion on what I think about ISO 2002 and its interplay with blockchain and all of that kind of stuff. And it just comes after having done more research and understanding and more time. And I've seen more events come and go and, you know, all of these things. So let's talk about what specifically this update to ISO 20022 is and why 19th of November is such a big date. So the 19th of November is the date that has been set to transition into the next phase of ISO 20022 rollout. And on this date, financial institutions are supposed to be migrating from SWIFT's MT messaging standard to ISO 20022. And like I said before, it allows more data, more structure, structured data, they call it data rich in that world, more data rich messages to be possible in these financial transactions. And for the industry as a whole, this makes payments way better, way more efficient, and makes how the banks are operating significantly smoother. Now, as I mentioned before, people on social media have been going crazy over this specific date. I've seen endless tweets about it. You know, people saying the 19th of November, everything's switching, it's gonna be the big moment, it's all gonna change. And in general, just people having this massive anticipation over the 19th of November, even going as far as to say that this ISO 20022 upgrade is part of the financial great reset. It certainly seems like there's a lot of credence being given to this date from a lot of people on Twitter. I think the most important mindset to be having about this is one of a very zoomed out perspective. I keep saying for people to zoom out right now because something is happening in this XRP community and the crypto community where everyone is down in the dumps. The prices are up this year, but no one believes it. It's kind of this weird situation. It's actually very natural psychological behavior. And this is how markets go up and down, right? It's just everyone's emotions coming up and down. It just feels very strange right now that no one is really believing that the bull run has already started. I, I have a big fear, and this is unrelated to this video. I do have a big fear that we're gonna get up to some price points that have been you know, that we've been hoping for, let's say even eight to $10 for XRP, for example, we're gonna get all the way up there and people still aren't gonna believe that the bull run has started. Um, but it's fully possible that the bull run might be ending at that point, right? And then just just like how people miss out the, the bear market and they don't buy at the lows because they don't believe that the lows are low enough yet and they think there's gonna be further lows, it's the same on the other side. You just flip the chart upside down. Now you've got people who don't believe the top is here. And so they hold on and they miss the top. And then it's just a bad situation. That's why it's really important to take profits and have that strategy for taking profits along the way. But zooming out is just so, so important right now because let's look at ISO for what it is right now, right? It's speculated, and this is connecting dots and patents and research, it's still only speculated that ISO 20022 is actually functionally able to reach into a blockchain and retrieve a token or direct or instruct value 
to be transferred on a blockchain into the traditional system. We have lots of reason to think that's the case, but for all intents and purposes, it's speculated. And so what ends up happening if you have speculation on speculation on speculation on speculation is that you end up with a string of speculations and the destination might not necessarily be entirely grounded in in anything um, and i'm not i'm not I look i'm not talking from a position of like i know best um because i've been part of the kind of thinking you know iso 20022 is really fundamental for crypto and xrp because it's iso 20022 compliant or at least the ledger is and the way they transfer messages on the ledger we just have to be very careful about how many speculations we string up together because it can get you to a point i think where you're looking at a small step in the migration to ISO 20022. You're looking at that small step as being the moment when that, that really might not be the case. It might just be a small step, right? Just one of those deadlines in the whole rollout of ISO 20022. The messages that get updated might not even impact the value transfer at all. It might just be an update to the symbols or the characters they can use in a message, right? Because we looked at a while ago, we looked at German characters like umlauts and you have to kind of add all of these characters from all around the world so that all the messages can talk to each other and, and be understood in different languages, right? And so you could have something as small as an update on November 19th to say, oh, we're gonna, this is our umlaut update. You know, it could be as small as that. I'm not saying it is, but it's just, we shouldn't be looking at this as something that's gonna drastically change cryptocurrency on a specific date, but more look at it as from this perspective. This is a small step, a small improvement, a small deadline in the whole journey of updating to ISO 20022. And in the end, when everything is migrated over to ISO 22, we can look at that and say, okay, well, the blockchains that we are so interested in interoperate with that standard. That is great because if there is such thing as token retrieval and you know pulling those tokens out and using them within the messages to send value, fantastic because that means it's an increased use case for the cryptocurrencies that we are so interested in and because there's an increased use case doesn't necessarily mean the price will go up directly but indirectly because it's integrated with the traditional system and the new system all in one maybe the tokens that we have will be more desirable more people will buy and less will be in circulation therefore increasing the price i really don't think it's any one news piece that creates adoption for XRP. I think what happens is the frog in the boiling water analogy. The frog's in the cold water, it's just in the cold water, but if you slowly turn up the heat, it doesn't realize the temperature change and eventually the frog dies. I'm not sure how I'm tying that into XRP, but what I'm saying is oftentimes I don't think we realize how much has changed right now that we're just not aware of, right? It's changed so slowly and I believe will continue to change slowly rather than like, this is the moment. ISO is upgraded and now's the moment. Knowing more about ISO, I just don't think that's the case. I really just think ISO 20022 is a messaging standard that's being updated so everyone can be on that same standard. That may affect crypto eventually because of how cryptos can be interoperable with that standard, but it has at best indirect impact on the price of our assets and i think that's multiple layers of indirectness in my opinion so moving into the 19th of november i just want to put a word of caution out there to everyone who has some hope or level of expectation for what's going to happen on the 19th ultimately i think people are hoping that it's going to increase the price of iso tokens i just think that is too many speculations joined up and that we should practice some caution, level-headedness and sit back and let's see uh, mentality about the 19th of November. So tomorrow, don't expect anything to happen. If it does, let it sit for a few hours. Let's wait to see what is the actual reason for that price increase. I doubt it's gonna be the ISO thing. If the price does go up, I think that's gonna be a coincidence and maybe just purely psychological market hype for everyone who's interested in the 19th. They almost create their own reality. It's gonna go up, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy. And then the price goes up, not because of ISO, but because of everyone buying, um, which usually would just be short-lived. Now, I've also seen updates from Blockchain Backer on, on his most recent video. There's a, there's a moment that we're at right now where down to the pattern, you know, this is where 
the noticeable moves could be made in the crypto market to the upside. I would just say, sit back, get yourself into the lose letter. So you don't have to do the 24 hours, 24 seven research that you have been doing. Take a step back, go and play golf, go and do something fun tomorrow on Sunday. <laughs> don't be waiting around for this ISO news. Get your plan in order, take some profits as the price continues to go up. Live your life a little bit because as I said in the lose letter very recently, I'm becoming very conscious of the limited time that we have alive, right? We have this idea of, you know, investing is smart and it's a good thing to do, but also we're running out of time, like in life. So you've got to start hedging for both sides. I think hedging for enjoyment in life is taking profits. And I think hedging for a long and wealthy life is investing. But don't go on one side, like don't go out and buy Lambos right now if you had the money to buy Lambos, but don't go and spend everything now. But also don't just have everything locked away so that you're you're living this kind of ramen noodle life. No one needs to be doing that. You can just enjoy some, take some profits. And I, I think that's just the best mentality to have and the best way to move forward. But the lose letter will just keep you updated once a week, five minute read. You just get pulled up to date with all the news that's happened in the world that we're so interested in. You can just read that for five minutes and leave and come back the next week. As for the mastermind, it's continuing to grow. People are using it exactly how it's supposed to be used, asking all their questions about tax mitigation and all that kind of stuff. And on also contacting the professionals in our directory, which is amazing. We have professionals all over the world where all their details are there, they've been vetted. If you come into the mastermind, you can just make contact with those professionals and get advice on estate structure, tax mitigation from licensed professionals. I think that's really, really important. And this month, we got a crazy month. Two Q and A's with professionals in America who are gonna be answering your questions live about trust structures, tax mitigation, and whole life insurance to be able to borrow money cash free from insurance policies within an estate structure. This is very complex stuff. They're gonna be in the mastermind, talking with you, answering your questions and delivering amazing content. The price for the mastermind goes up every Friday morning. So you've got a little bit of time from now to the next price jump, but you might as well get in now to be part of those Q and A's when they happen. If you wanna hear more about the mastermind, I'm gonna let it play at the end of the video. But if not, and you're done here, I'm done here. <laughs> Stay emotionless. I'll see you in the next one. Over the last six months, things have started to shift. And by a shift, I mean, over the last six months, more people who meet that high net worth individual status have been contacting, asking me if I can facilitate large crypto purchases, connect them with people in private equity. And I found quite frankly, that I've been quite good at that. And as time has gone on, I've really realized that I can connect people with some fantastic deals, great investment opportunities, and provide solutions for people at that level that you've probably never thought of. I acknowledge that not everyone is a high net worth individual, at least yet. And so that's exactly why I've created the 1% Mastermind. Over the last two years of making content, I've seen one of the biggest demands and needs of the audience is to have a list of professionals that you can contact when this whole thing takes off. When all the money comes in, our portfolios are of high value, what now? What do we do? Who do we contact? There's also a group of individuals that want to improve and do business and network among other millionaires to be. Nobody in the digital asset space has ever seen anything like this. Wherever you are in the world, the plan of the mastermind is to be able to connect you with professionals, not only in accounting and tax and law and estate planning, but to connect you with individuals who actually understand the assets you hold. We know about this all too well. We call an accountant and you know more about Bitcoin and XRP than they do. And it's not just a directory of professionals that we're offering here. We also have unique investment opportunities for individuals, even if you don't meet the accredited investor requirements. When you think about diversifying your assets in the long term, you might be considering real estate, venture capital, private equity. You won't need to go over here to find a deal. You won't need to go over here to find a deal. It will all be housed in that one central location and you'll be surrounded by individuals that are on the same page as you and want the same thing, not just for themselves, but they want the same thing for you. In addition to all of that, we'll also have a library of content answering your specific questions, not made for views, not made for engagement, but made specifically to add value to the library of content that there will be. As time goes on, the price of the membership will actually go up and likely will go up every single week from here on out. So join the 1% Mastermind today and I'll see you in there.